Hey everybody, Jeff Cavanaugh here. You are listening to the Drunk Sports Podcast with Big Red and Indy Cartoon. Talking sports, current events, guy stuff, and everything in between. Now open up a cold one and drink along because they're here. Lance and Tim. You can buy me a drink. <laughs> We're all drunk. <laughs> Hello, 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 and welcome, 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 as we fight technology once again, and try to go online to multiple streams at the same time. I am IndyCar Tim, along with my favorite partner in the whole world, Big Red, baby. We have a very special guest in studio, or I should say in garage with us tonight. It's still Studio 69. It is Studio 69 at Casa Not So Grande. We have a very special guest, Mr. Mike Fisher from 105.3 The Fan and DallasBasketball.com. Mike, how are you doing today? Can that camera see all three of our fat asses? It can see all three of our fat asses. It's wide angle. It's wide angle. (laughs) Panoramic. It is so wide angle. Well, uh, thanks to you guys, I'm... Showed me the magic of, of YouTube, and so now I'm a I'm a I'm, I'm like a millennial times two. <laughs> well, we're not millennials, no, but we'll, not, we'll accept sorry. that. Uh, Lance <laughs> has also shown you the magic of ribs. Oh my gosh! So Sean Sharif, Gavin Dawson, uh, Ben Rogers, eat my dust. You know, it's a good, it's a fantastic radio thing. It's a man thing, and so. Uh, those guys getting into their own competition, and of course, mm-hmm. Kevin Dawson with Premier Grilling, you know, that's, it's, it's serious business, obviously. Uh, but the other day, Sean put up some, I guess it was a brisket, right? He said, I call this brown magic, yes. because Gavin Dawson <laughs> orange, orange magic. magic. Right. Uh, and as I said to Sean on Facebook, and I said it to him today to his face, I said, I believe your nickname back in Maryland uh, High School when you were playing girls high school tennis was it Brown, <laughs> Brown Magic, Magic back then as well? <laughs> Sean Sharif, I don't know. Does he ever eat a vegetable? Does he ever mix in a vegetable? <laughs> well, he doesn't look like it. <laughs> His hands are too small to wrap around the little vegetables. Oh. oh. Oh, we are live on Facebook. We are live on YouTube. Uh, we are live everywhere you can possibly imagine us being live. I'm working on it. You keep pointing at shit. It says start a broadcast. Oh, I'm trying. You know why? Because you guys aren't used to 7 p.m. broadcast. No. We are two hours early. Is this thing on? This thing on? Well, that's on. That's all I care you about. You guys usually do a 9 o'clock or on Sundays, right? Yes. But because of my bedtime, it's <laughs> <laughs> 7 o'clock. We had it's to accommodate. Can you, can you come every week for yes. <laughs> we had to accommodate Mr. Mike Fisher, whose bedtime is 9.30. Uh, but we are happy to do so because he is a Dallas radio legend, and we are so blessed to have him on tonight. Absolutely. Um, hello to our drunk dudes and dolls and drunk sports podtards. Um, hello to Facebook, YouTube. If you would like to reach us on Facebook, you know where to go. If you'd like to reach us on Twitter, I am at IndyCar Tim. He is at Drunk Big Red. As a show, we are at Drunk Sports DFW, and of course, as always, Mike Fisher is at Fish Sports. Um, you can listen to our podcast on every single available podcast outlet: Spotify, Apple, Google, Castbox, uh, Stitcher, Radio Public, iHeartRadio. We are also on the Radio.com app, just like the fan. And our episode tonight is brought to you, as always by the Highlands Performance Golf Center in Carrollton, Texas. They're at 2538 Golden Bear Drive, 972-733-4111. And they have a new website we need to make everybody aware of because I just tried to log on to the old one today and it did not work. Uh, They are now at highlandspgc.com. And we will try to make everyone aware of that as the old one has been disconnected. We need to get them to... uh that we need to talk to them about that because the old one needs to be forwarded to the new one because uh, we have about I don't know 15 episodes with the old ep- the old uh, website uh, on our feed I can change it and I will but it would be nice if they would just forward that so everybody go check out the Highlands Performance Golf Center in Carrollton um, they will get your golf game where it needs to be they offer everything uh, from new lessons uh, if you think you've played for a long time and you're ready for the tour, they will help you there. They have an actual fitness center, and not just like a workout room. They have a golf fitness center 
run by Mr. Chris Ownby, um, to steer your muscle mass towards golf. Uh, Fish, do you play play a lot of golf? I play six times a year. Wow. In charity it's more events, than me. Like celebrity, fake, pseudo celebrity charity events. And oh, I'm so close to being mediocre. So you're not you're not uh, going to play on the the CenturyLink celebrity golf? No. The, uh, first they, of all, they had I'm this. not century linky, nor am I a celebrity. <laughs> Tony Romo won it again yeah, this year. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Um, Two years in a row. Yeah, it's, a, it's so hard to get good. And it takes so much time to get good and money. Golf is hard. Yeah. Golf and is then, expensive. But what keeps sucking you back is, like about one out of every seven shots, I'm like, oh, man, I'm so good. If I would just <laughs> one out of seven, dude, that's exactly right. About one out of seven shots. You need to mark that because that may be a pretty good drop. That's what I. I'll mark it right there. Am I right? So it's good. marked. A no shot. You know, you you dibble dab over here, and that one's okay, and that one felt good, but it went that way. But one out of seven, you're like, this is this is doable, dude. But then it's not. <laughs> so I hadn't played golf in about ten years, and I went out with this fucker here that plays all the time. Can we swear? Are they swear on this show. Oh, oh, dude, boy. it's a podcast. Yeah, I love that he looked at me for authorization. Yeah. <laughs> it's our producer, by the way. <laughs> Those are our producers. <laughs> Manager, I'd like to complain about these two people at this table. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking kick him out. He said a bad word. We are not in a bar. <laughs> when we were at the Maverick, we did not cuss, but yeah, we're no. in the garage. Yeah, that's right. That's All bets right. are off. So I had played in like 10 years. Yeah. I was badass in high school on the golf team. I was a, a seven handicap in my best day. I dominated, yeah. as my wife likes to point out. That yeah. is going to be a new drinking room. He took me out with his with our golf pro, by the way, sponsor of the show, John Gerber with the Islands Performance Golf Center. We played up in um, the, um, bridges. the Bridges in Gunter, Texas. And I was using 25-year-old clubs, which I thought were still cool clubs because they were cavity backs. And I did not perform well. Technology has changed. Technology has changed. Your performance golf center was not there. Dude, I hit literally about one out of seven shots that were great. And it was, like you said, it was just enough to keep me there, keep me hanging, keep me going. Oh, it was so amazing. But the one shot, the shots that I did hit great, it was like, yeah, fuck y'all. Look what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> it was embarrassing the rest of the time. It was so embarrassing. So shout outs to everybody here. We've got Lauren. We've got Stacy. We've got Mark. He has his badge here, so everybody chill. You get an audience. We love Mark. Garage podcast. It's yes. Cool. Yes, we do. And usually it's more. Homeowners uh, association complaints. I'm sure. Because <laughs> we have the speaker in the garage. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. My my neighbor came over one night after after we were done. He said, uh, "said Hey, wait, wait, wait which what's neighbor? That guy? They yeah, he's baby. been over here before. Right. They have a new baby. Have a new baby. So I had, we had the music a little loud. Oh, I'm gonna go pay him down. a visit after the show. <laughs> I should go pay him a visit after the show. So uh, apologies if Mike's not familiar with our show. So, um. Mike, there's a segment that we do at the, at the beginning of each episode. I'm somewhat familiar with your show, but go ahead. It is called Apologies and Corrections. <laughs> yes. And it is, it's been told to me by Corey, Kevin, Jeff, the other Kevin with the fan that it is their favorite part of the show because it's when we call each other out yes. uh, for screwing up stuff on the last episode. Gotcha. Um, so Apologies and Corrections, um, the only apo- by the way, our last episode was at the great Maverick Bar in Carrollton uh, last Sunday night uh, during the Gold Cup game, which was very unstable because neither one of us are soccer fans, and there was a lot of <laughs> soccer fans in that, that bar. Was, it's a yeah. good mix and match there at the Maverick Bar. 16-16 yes. Hebron, 16 minutes from anywhere. It there is. Yeah. It's 16 minutes from here, right? Like it didn't take us any time to be there. Oh, hey, shh. Hush. Hey, this is an exclusive exclusive. The peanut gallery needs to tone it down. Yeah, I'm turning y'all's mics off. Uh, So, yes, we did an episode from there. It was not predicted that there would be a soccer game on because no one expected the men's U.S. national team to advance that far, I don't think. Um, They lost anyway. But we were there. We were set up. We waited till halftime to broadcast. And it was the 
same day, right after the women. After won. the women won yeah. the World Cup, so it was which was cool. Hockey fever pitch. BS. So we chose to wait until at least halftime of the game to go on. Because you guys are nothing if not polite. <laughs> <laughs> no one has ever accused us of being polite. Nope. That has never happened. Uh, so the women won. So we're watching the Gold Cup, which I didn't know was a thing. It was in Chicago at Soldier Field. It was Mexico. By the way, how does Mexico miss the World Cup? Were they not in the World Cup? I didn't even think about that till now. Well, it was the Women's World Cup. It was, we watched a men's. So it was. It's, oh, yeah, that's yeah, why. Yeah. See, I don't even know the difference. <laughs> well, God damn it! I women, suck. Women I should watch more soccer. Have, I'm sorry, mind. Gavin. I should watch more soccer. So we were watching the Gold Cup men's because they didn't make the World Cup. Um, and so Mexico scored. It was like one to nothing. Right? Was the final score? Yes. So we were on air whenever Mexico scored the first goal or their only goal. And the dude that scored the goal went running in the field and took his shirt off. And what did we see? He had a sports bra on. What? We were what? very confused. Yes, I couldn't. I couldn't. Uh, yes. It, it, because the guy that scored the goal a sports bra. had a sports bra on when he took off his shirt. It was very confusing. There were but people in front of us were pointing at the screen, so I looked back over my head, and the dude had a sports bra on. All right, can but I, can I attempt to shed some possible light on it? Well, you can, yeah. What are those jerseys made out of that they wear? Uh, yeah. Fleece. I don't know. I don't either. Wool? But no, no, that's. You would old. not think they were made of fleece or wool. <laughs> you would think they were air breathing, sweat sucking. What's the hey? What's the golf stuff called? On your golf shirts. The dry tech stuff. Dry tech. Dry tech. But have you ever? You guys are old enough. Have you, have you ever worn a jersey that kind of it rubbed your... Rubbed the nipples. nipples. You can say nipples. The wrong way. If you can say fuck, I guess I can say nipples. You can say nipples. <laughs> well, you just said it fuck too, fish, so... It, they, so maybe it's, it's, a, it's, it's nip guard. Well, I, but I have the answer as to what it is because oh. I had several people tweet me to say uh, that is not a sports bra. Um, that is a heart monitor. Oh. Now, don't you feel like a douchebag? No, because yeah. I don't really give a shit. <laughs> I feel worse. I thought I had a nip guard. <laughs> yeah. Hey. So they're measuring his heart. They're, they're, each they're player the has. Arms. Exactly. <laughs> Which, I don't, why does that matter? Huh? Well, it's technology. You wouldn't it's, understand. I would not. <laughs> but apparently, we, we still don't understand. God, Fish technology. knows us better than we thought he did. He did, because, yes, no, I don't. I get heart monitors. I'm not worried about that right now. Okay, good. Let's go. <sighs> I'm getting blown up here. <laughs> By who? Oh. So we're, I don't know if we're live streaming or not. No, I don't think we are. Jesus you Christ. Are you going to hit by Fish Sports family? All right, I, I'm trying. But look, is that? It's recording. We're oh. at least recording. That's okay. all I really care okay. about. Right, do or do not. Do or do not. There is no try. <laughs> as our producer mimics Yoda. Fish, you know who Yoda is? Can you say? Yoda. <laughs> yeah, I'm familiar with Yoda. All right. <laughs> We're just going to make sure. Um, so, the next segment. God, that didn't work. I really what? wanted that to be a segment. We're all drunk. There you go. Uh, intro. That? <laughs> that? <laughs> Does that sound like a fart? Yes. Hey, Lauren. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, we'll keep working on that. I'm trying to find a segment divider, all right? I thought that would be one, but maybe... We're all drunk. I think that works better. What about this? Give it to me, Lance. Give it to me, Lance. Push, no. push. Give it to me, Lance. Absolutely. Big red. Big red. All right, I'm done pushing buttons. That's, that clap is way too long. So, um, hugs and high fives are a part of the show. And, Fish, this is something you can probably comment on as being an NBA dude. Yes. Um, we, might remi- we might remember Mr. Amari Stoudemire. I do. He, he claims, claims in the big three. He claims that he still has a lot to offer NBA teams. Have you seen this story? I'm familiar. He told the MSG Network on Tuesday that he can bring needed leadership to young NBA teams and still has a lot of game left as he attempts to return to the league. He's 36. 
Um, he appeared on the MSG network and was asked what kind of pitch he's making to NBA teams. He said, quote, a lot of teams have a lot of young players and a lot of young players that can learn how to train, how to become professionals, and how to become great basketball players. A lot of leadership goes a long way with teams in order to get from a playoff team to a contending championship team. From that standpoint, I have a lot to offer. And also, for, as a basketball player, I still have a lot of game left. I can help any team in any way. Uh, Fisher, more in tune with the NBA. You probably kept that with Amari Stoudemire way more than anybody else. Is that true? If that's true, then why is there a gap between when he last played and tomorrow? Why? Why? I'm not saying he can't do it. I'm saying, why didn't he already do it? Why didn't he play last year? Or, if I recall, the year before that. So he played the last two seasons for Hapel Jerusalem in si, Israel. See, si, pero that doesn't count. No, that's not NBA I'm experience. playing in the NBA. Exactly. Uh, um, same thing with Monte Ellis. I don't know what Monte Ellis has been doing, but he's in the same boat saying, yeah, uh, you know, I'm, I want to try out and I want to give it another go. And, you know, I... I don't bet against. Listen, I'm the I'm the I'm the worst athlete you ever saw. So I don't bet against people who are actually not the worst. Well, okay, I'm in the top. I'm the bottom three (laughs) at this table. (laughs) But but you left the game. You left the NBA game two years ago or three years ago, whatever. The gap suggests that you really couldn't play two and three years ago anymore. So no, I am not a buyer of this. No, I'm not a buyer either. Um, And that's why he deserves a hug. This is a show hug because. I think he's delusional. He's 36. He hasn't played in the league in two years. I think, I, seriously, I think I saw him playing in the big three. He's in the big three. There you go. He okay, is in about, the big I, three. Let me, let me, how about not delusional? How about he's competitive? Well, he right. wouldn't be the first guy that right. couldn't quite let go of it. You can't take you that away from me, man. You did it, Mr. Goffer. You did it. Where, my, where I was so good. But, you know, have you tried it now, your advanced age? So, like, even, like... Even, like, run to first base and turn to second? <laughs> it's hard. I can't run 90 feet. It's so it's so I didn't even remember that he played for the Mavericks. Oh, yeah. I did not even remember yeah. that. It wasn't fun. But no, it, no, it wasn't a fun team. But he did it. So, Amari Stoudemire, you need We're all a show young. hug. <laughs> Mr. High Fives. Does anybody remember a Washington Redskins cornerback by the name of Josh Norman? I know you guys know Josh. He's a bull jumper. I am not a fan of Josh Norman. Never have been, never Would will be. Would you be a fan if he was on your team? Yes. If he played for the well, Cowboys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much like Deion Sanders. De- yeah, absolutely. I call it Deion Sanders syndrome. It is the Deion Sanders syndrome. I thought I called it that. No. It could I'll be share the, it with you. You want to share that. credit? Yeah, the, guy, the most hated guy... But if he's he's just he's you hate him and love him. If he's on your team, right? He's the greatest player of all time. Right. But even when you devote that much time to hating somebody, you have some sort of secret sexy. There's a vested interest. It's like killing Eve. So, <laughs> dude, I want to kill Eve so much right now. <laughs> so you know what? It's it's Deion Sanders. It's Terrell Owens. Yep. Same player. Yep. Uh, you could make a case for Bill Romanowski. You yep. hate him, but if he's on your team. Yeah, he was good. He hey, was I, good. Brett Favre. Charles Barkley. I grew up in Minnesota. I'm a Viking fan. Brett Favre. Brett Favre comes to the Vikings. The man in I'm search of a you, bell. For about three months, me and my brothers and my kid, we're, we, 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 we're unwilling to accept it. Really? Unwilling to accept it. Was it only because he played for Green Bay or because of he, he him as a the, person? He was the enemy. Yeah. If you're a Viking fan, in that era, that right. was the number one enemy. Yep, enemy number one. I don't want to throw a Hitler out here because that ends the show, as we all know. <laughs> but he was the number one, you know, that, that was like electing Hitler president. Right. Yeah, I just did it. But you oh, know what electing Hitler. Wow, Brett Favre is Hitler, <laughs> did, uh, according to Mike Fisher. Ex- <laughs> exclusive, exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to disagree with that. So, Josh Norman... Went running with the Bulls yes. in Spain. So, 
That's why I'm giving him a high five because that is badass. Yeah. Who hasn't wanted to do that? Me. However, well, yeah, us. Yeah, besides people who us, can't. People who have the right mind. Would you like to run with the Bulls? I, I would like to run with the Chicago Bulls. Would you like to run with the Bulls? I have, I have, I, I, no, I can't no, run. <laughs> <laughs> no, because everybody would. It's like, it's like whenever you're when you're, you're hiking in the woods and a yeah. bear shows up, right. you don't have to be faster than the bear. You just have to be faster than the dude you're with. <laughs> than the last dude. <laughs> yes. That's all. all I got to do is outrun his ass. That's right. And as long as I can do that, I'm fine. Yeah, you guys, uh, you're bad at the jumping. You've got the bull part. Now. Yeah. I heard the show. The bull. Oh yeah, yeah it's it. yeah. it's terrible. <laughs> Uh, so Josh Norman, who tweeted a picture after the fourth day of the festival in the northern Spanish city, ran with the bulls, um, which is known for being dangerous. Yes. How dangerous are the bulls? In 20 times, bulls from this ranch have run, and they have gorged 30 runners and hold the record for the most gorgings in a single day with eight in July 2004. In 09, a Madrid-born runner was killed by a bull from the same place. So how do you think the Washington Redskins feel about Josh Norman? I bet they're not the least the bit happy about that shit. So isn't there stuff? So fish, you're like more in tune with contracts. Isn't there normally stuff in a professional player's yeah. contract saying you can't skateboard, you can't play pickup basketball and you can't run with the bulls. Yeah. There's, there's, I don't know if the clauses are specific to you can't snow ski or, general you can't snow ski but i promise you uh, the redskins are displeased at the same time the redskins are the redskins it is <laughs> and they're dysfunctional <laughs> it is right? the most dysfunctional little danny football Schneider. program in america they the redskins are so dysfunctional they may be unaware that this happened wow <laughs> <laughs> exclusive hey, exclusive they may have Dude. to listen to this program <laughs> So Daniel Snyder, who by the way is a regular listener of the podcast, right? Yeah, might have just had breaking news, yeah. exclusive, exclusive. exclusive. Little Danny Snyder, uh, little. Oh my God, I'm so glad the Redskins are in the NFC East. No uh, doubt, because there's nothing we can do but beat them by accident. Do you think Jerry Jones looks at the Washington Redskins on nice? He's he's sitting in his office at the Star. His big, huge office. He's got his 150-year-old vodka, not vodka, whiskey over here. Because there's Johnny no, there's Walker's no 100. Blue. He's got his Johnny Walker blue or red or whatever the hell over blue. here. He he drinks. He's he's sitting back at his desk and he's, he's like, Dan, little Danny Snyder. I'm so glad you're in my division. He just <laughs> takes a drink yeah. because, dude, they are so dysfunctional. And I love that because I'm a Cowboys fan. Uh, next, who needs a hug, Lance? How about Boris Becker? Boris Becker. What? You, you, I, I heard about this earlier. It's, this is kind of sad. Yeah, it, I'm a tennis fan. We're going to get into Wimbledon, which just ended today, a little bit later. But Boris Becker, of course a staple in tennis in the late 80s, mid, late 80s, early 90s. Uh, one of my favorite tennis players. The original big German. The original big German. And by the way, Dirk Nowitzki's favorite athlete of all time. I can see that. Um, and no, that's not, I'm not making that up. He told me personally at a party at his house, the Boris Becker. Like when I was it done. Before or after you tucked his kids in? He didn't have kids back then, hey, sorry. you want to know something about Dirk Nowitzki's house? He's got a urinal in his bathroom. And it's super tall. <laughs> it's like set six <laughs> feet up. Seriously. You think you I'm know joking? house? No, I, don't, I know you're not joking. I'm not really funny. It's not a joke. I'm very serious. So, minded. so whenever you went to the uh, bathroom, uh, did you try uh, to uh, use uh, that urinal? I mean, did you have to stand back a little bit and aim a little higher than normal? Yeah. It's like Charles Foster Kane's fireplace. Citizen <laughs> 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 Kane's fireplace. Dirk Nowitzki's urinal. Oh, shit. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so, you know, Boris Becker was a tennis great. Yes. He's from Germany, and he's Dirk's favorite professional af athlete of all time. Um, but apparently, 
he's bankrupt. What? I'm not sure how this happens. Uh, the article says the 51-year-old was declared bankrupt by a British court in 2017 in connection to debt to private bankers. Cannot pronounce this name. And the company dealing with his bankruptcy decided to auction 82 items from his collection. So Boris Becker raised 680,000 pounds, which equates to $855,000 in America. So I posed this question, as I do. We talked about I don't Adrian own Peterson. Eight hundred and fifty-five dollars worth of shit. We talked about Adrian Peterson last week, right? Yep. Because he's in trouble. He's yep. in legal trouble, being sued because he couldn't pay back a a debt. Um, Boris Becker's career winnings. By the way, he is twelfth all time in tennis earnings. His career earnings are $25,080,000. Almost $81,000. When was the last time when was the last time he played? Do we know? I mean, off the top of our heads cuz I'm going to guess 96, 97. So, I mean, that much money. How much did he make? 25, almost 26 million dollars. Yeah. That's over I mean, career ending and I'm going to guess cuz the last all I have here that I recorded was his last uh Majors win was 96 in Australia. So, to make that much money 20 years ago? I mean, that's that's a huge chunk of change. And you just blew through it? I, I, it happens uh, in American professional sports all the time. No, I know. And I saw what we were talking about last week with Adrian Peterson being sued. Yeah. That if he finishes out his contract in Washington... He will have made over $100 million in professional football. All right, can I tell you a Mike Madonna story? Oh, Whoa. I'm pretty sure we know this, but don't, yeah, yeah. Don't, and I don't I rain don't on my Madonna parade. So we're at his, he's at a, he rents a house because he's building his mansion. And I, I have roomed with him as everybody makes fun of me on the fan. I was his roommate <laughs> for a, blah, No, blah, blah. we don't make fun of you. Yeah, so I'm over at his house and he... I, and we're sitting at the kitchen table, and he unfurls this this big blueprint. I'm like, okay, what's that rectangle? And that's the house. Oh, cool. What's that rectangle? That's the yard. What's that rectangle? That's the pool. Well, what's that rectangle? That's the other pool. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so you got like a kid's pool and an adult pool? At which point I said, you're going to go bankrupt. <laughs> 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 the other pool. The other Hashtag pool. the other pool. Gigantic <laughs> Olympic sized swimming pool. So, oh, um, guys, wow. Who, you know, I'm buying a house for my mom. I got 17 brothers and sisters in Michael Irvin's case. I, I got to help them. I got the cousins. I, I, I get a financial advisor who's not professional. Um, I, I, I don't get my. I don't have a parent who's either involved or who's sharp in this area. And these kind of things happen all too often. It's very sad. It's, it really is sad. Wow. And every once in a while, I'm so proud when I see Cowboys, Mavericks, whatever. A guy that, he just lives, he lives in a modest house in Frisco. Yeah. It's nice. He, you know, it's right. nice. It, it offers him all the things he needs. Because do you need a 20-bedroom home when you're 25 years old? With no kids. That, there you go. I don't know why anybody needs a 20-bedroom home, period. Unless hey, you've got have you 20 seen my family kids? members living with have you seen my kids? You don't need a 20-bedroom home because you've only got 17 kids, so you don't need 20 bedrooms. You need 17. I need an office. Well, you four offices? Maybe. You know, and, a, it, and a third pool. Okay. For the dogs. I, I think I think most people, you know, you just take a calculator and you figure out, if I could ever ma- have a million dollars, I could start living off, the, you know, I mean, we all... Yes, we all, I, 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 I keep well, saying, okay, if, I, if I, you know, could so ever... So somebody needs to help these guys understand that. And... and <laughs> I mean that's my deal. Like for professional athletes, when they go to a, when they get drafted, let's I don't care if it's hockey, baseball is a little different. Hockey's a little different because you're not an immediate contributor to the team. You don't immediately go to the NHL. You don't immediately go to MLB. You don't. You're not in the show. But like football and basketball, dude. When you get drafted, you are ex- like the first round guys. You are expected to contribute immediately. Contributor. And you immediately have $5 million at your disposal. Yeah. And these guys might have come from nothing. Certainly. Um, and, you know, even though there's going to be the people that say, well, 
they've been being paid in their college years or whatever, so they're used to having money. They still need to have someone tell them how to manage their money. And I find it hard to believe. Somebody like, of course, nobody says Mike Madonna is broke. Your story did not indicate Mike Madonna is broke because he's got all the money. But he was drafted as an 18-year-old into the Minnesota North Stars organization in 1989. Arguably the greatest American hockey player of all no, time. No, not arguably. There's no arguably. There's no argument. Yeah. He is the greatest American-born hockey player of yeah. all time. Um, but what do you do with that money? Like when It might have been beneficial for him because they moved to Dallas in 94. Because when he got drafted, they were in Minnesota. He's, he's from Livonia, Michigan. He's a Red Wings fan for life. That son of a bitch. <laughs> Fucker. Red Wings fan for life from Livonia, Michigan. Played high school there. Played junior hockey there. Was shipped off to play junior yep. hockey shipped somewhere off to else. The farm. Huh? Shipped off to the farm. Shipped off to in the Canada farm. To yeah, because that's where y'all go. And play hockey. Yep. That's where they go. Thankfully, got drafted 1989. First overall by the Minnesota North Stars. Went into their farm system. Um, but thank God... They moved here in 94 because, dude, he was up there spending his money. So it might have been beneficial that they moved to Dallas where he didn't know anybody. And I have a personal story about that because I was working in Las Colinas in, I don't know, December of 94. Not working, but I was driving through Las Colinas. (laughs) December of 94. I don't work. I'll never tell anybody I ever worked. December of 94. I went to a gas station at O'Connor... And 114. Pulled in to pump gas in my truck. The person next to me on the opposite side of the gas pumps was driving a, I don't know what year it was, whatever, probably 1993 BMW 850i with Michigan plates that spelled out the word N-I-N-E. It was Mike Madonna. What did it spell? Nine. N-I-N-E. Michigan oh. plates is spelled out the word nine. N-I-N-E. Gotcha. So I look over at him. I'm like. I thought, it, I thought you said, because I'm not good with hearing anymore. I thought you said M-I-M-E. And I was going. What? <laughs> Why? Why? Why would his place? Why would his place spell mine? <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> exclusive, exclusive. Uh, so I walked over to him. And I, I said, man, glad you guys are here. I love hockey. I hope everything works out. And, dude, he engaged me like oh, yeah. I was his best friend. He's a beauty. Because at the time, nobody in Texas knew who he was, nope. who the stars were. He says, man, just be a fan. Please watch, and we'll do something great. And, dude, Mike McDonald was, was – and I met him after that through my connections with the ticket and then again with the fan. That's a and four-letter word you can't use on the show. KTCK. That's yeah. Um, and dude, Mike Madonna has always been just a sweetheart. So the fact that Fish brought him up, man, that that's badass. I love that. Um, and I don't even remember where this conversation started. Where did this start? Where do we start? I have no idea. You're the one that's We're all drunk. Yeah, it's just. Oh, boy, we're talking about Boris Becker and how they how we got freaking and, yeah, and broke. Now, now we're talking about oh, Jesus talking Christ. About Mike Madonna. So Boris Becker is oh, broke yeah. because because Fish started talking and about he sold his shit. <laughs> started talking about the. Uh, uh, so yeah, high five number two. By the way, we're getting, we're we're done with Boris Becker. I'm done with Boris Becker. Fucking like German. Done. Remember the Alamo. So we're going back to a story that we talked about probably two weeks ago regarding Ezekiel Elliott, uh, who was accused of, uh, I don't know, beating up a dude in Las Vegas at a music thing, right? We talked about that. The NFL has relieved him of any responsibilities. They said, you didn't do anything wrong. You did not violate your terms of, I don't know if he's on NFL probation or whatever, but they said, you're good. You're good to go. You did nothing wrong. So, have a nice day, move on with your NFL life, go to training camp, and be a badass. Yes. We talked about that. Well, apparently, Mr. Kyle Johnson, who is the motherfucker that he allegedly pushed. 
Okay. Jeb is on his way. He was coming from DFW Airport. Roger that. Got it. <sighs> is he bringing chicks? Is he bringing girls? Um, I don't know. Okay, can you text him and ask if he's going to bring naked girls? You we need... No, there's no video feed right now. We need hookers and blow. Oh! <laughs> we need hookers and blow. Huh? We? We. We, we. 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 Like we? We need hookers we and need blow. Hookers and blow. <laughs> we all need hookers Don't and blow. Don't tell fish. <laughs> We're Don't all fish, drunk. we need hookers and blow. We're all drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ezekiel Elliott has been now, after he was relieved of all hey, can shit I from the NFL. You don't have to interrupt. I excuse myself uh, to call Mike Madonna. Oh, Fish just went and called Mike Madonna. And I asked him if he'd come on this podcast. And he said, with that guy that... Bugged me in 1994 at the Conoco and Irving? <laughs> <laughs> no. I will pass. I'll pass yeah. yeah, I can see that. <laughs> I can see that. So, of course, Ezekiel Elliott was uh, relieved of any and all responsibility no, actually, he, actually with the he issue. he went back inside for more ribs. Yeah. Well, he called Mike Madonna, clearly. I'm going to text Mike Madonna right now and ask him, did you just hear from Fish? <laughs> um, and your ex-wife just called me. Oh, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> What's her name? W- w- Willa Ford. Willa Ford right, just Ezekiel called Elliott. me. Oh, we got to move on. Yeah. So Ezekiel Elliott, who was just to leave the Vanny and all responsibilities and wrongdoings from the NFL and Roger Goodell, uh, the man, the man that he allegedly pushed over a barricade, did not like that decision from the NFL. And now, now, not before, but now, has decided to press charges with the Las Vegas Police Department. He had to sleep on it. Well, he had to sleep on it for like four months, if he had to sleep on it. So 55 days. It was 55 yeah. days. I totally trust Fish's time frame on that, because I did not do the math. The math is hard. Yeah, all you got to do is go to Fish's... Uh, you, uh, YouTube channel. Go to my YouTube channel. Go, go to Fish's YouTube channel. Which is what? Hey, Lance, you can, you can, you what's his YouTube channel? At, no, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm out. Fish Sports DFW. Which wouldn't exist without your guys' help, so thank yes, you. Yes, so go to Fish Sports DFW on YouTube. I think I may have been drunk when we created that. And too. he has all sorts of shit for you. Um, but the reason I'm giving a high, this is a high five segment. It's a high five segment. That, that, that doesn't do anything right. That? Yeah. It is? Yeah. Oh, damn it. All right, I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying for shit to make this legit. God dang it. Um, so this is a high five for Ezekiel Elliott because he has nothing to worry about. Um, if, the, if the Las Vegas Police Department decide there was wrongdoing, and now there's there's before there was no legal... Uh, criminal action filed, but now Kyle Johnson has decided 55 days later uh, that now he was wronged. Is he is he hurt? Is he in a cast? Was a crime committed? The Ezekiel Elliott camp is crying extortion. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And may I, I sp- can, may I speak? Yes, please. When I bring this up, and I did this on my YouTube channel, <laughs> well, you can go get it, Fish Sports DFW, maybe. When you bring up, well, what is what is the security kid boy's claim? That you know, what, how ridiculous, what silly behavior? And I do have some people coming at me and saying, "What about Zeke's behavior?" Yeah, I know, yeah, I know, but it's two separate things. They're two separate conversations. Right. The Ezekiel Elliott behavior is something that I've written about. A million times in four years. This is a new thing and a different thing. Did he get hurt? Nope. Was he battered? Nope. Was he assaulted? Nope. Did Elliot apologize? He did indeed. After the fact. Well, when were you supposed to do it? Before? Not, well, no. <laughs> okay, so in, in, in Kyle Johnson's defense. Try it. I dare you. 
You are Kyle Johnson's defense attorney. Go, sir. Zeke did not apologize at the time that the thing happened. Allegedly happened. I mean, that night. So if you want to whip somebody's ass and you tell them, look. Or I'm did he? I'm fixing to whip your ass, but I'm sorry for the ass whipping that's coming. That's not what yeah, I but said. There, but there was no ass whipping. No, but, but he just but, fell down. He, but he the could have been. <clears throat> Allegedly at the time, Zeke did not help him up and say, I'm sorry. Well, he couldn't do that with his hands since he was handcuffed. He was hand. Well, the, correct. This, this is not a defense of Ezekiel Elliott's behavior in this incident or others. Ezekiel Elliott should have taken the advice of all of our moms and not been out at 3 a.m. And we all. Not that you guys have ever taken that advice. You guys do your show at 3 a.m. But, we love 3 a.m. But, but, but 3 a.m. is a good time to go home, and, and we all know that. And it appeared as though maybe alcohol was involved, and, and that no. makes it even more of a time to no. go home. But that's separate from saying, was a crime committed? Was assault committed? Was battery committed? What, what this boy, this boy didn't even get his feelings hurt, nope. let alone get thrown over right. a metal fence. Nope. Um, and, and so am, am I, if I was Zeke's dad, would I be going, dude, son, get your ass home. I would indeed. Yep. And I have two sons in their 20s. And I, not only would I indeed, I have indeed. You've got, a, you've got a kids in the 20s, yes. right? Yes, I do. We, we tell our kids in your 20s, go home, son. Go home, daughter. Yes. But that's separate from this boy whose dad isn't saying go home. This boy's dad is saying, get him. To the point where the dad is saying, I wish I would have been there that night because I look like I'm about 5'10", 125, and 55 years old. Zeke's twice as big as I am and, tw- and half as young. I would have dropped him. Dad, that's why your son's acting like this. Quit acting like that, and your son yep. will quit acting like this. I'm not saying go put your tail between your legs. You, you want to demand an apology from Zeke Elliott? Uh, ma- man to man? Okay. Zeke Elliott should call him and say, I really mean it. I, I nudged you with my elbow. I shouldn't have. I'm sorry. That I shouldn't have. I should have hit you with my elbow. I'll, I'll, I'll send you a, a Tolo bumper sticker. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me sign a picture for you. But isn't the guy, he's the security guard, right? Security? He was a security so guard at whatever that event. Does kind of come with the territory, though? You should be expecting can, you, can everybody that? hear her? It's a great point by Lauren Hamm. If I'm working security at a Ranger, no one remembers my name. <laughs> if I'm working security Reiner does. At, at a Rangers game, madam, got a full-time job during the day, and I'm a, maybe I'm a retired guy. And I'm old. I got a part-time job at the security at a Rangers game. Yep. I get nudged. I get nudged all the time. I get nudged at. Hell, I nudged you when you walked in my house the first time. Right. We reached for a rib. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> That's right. What? So. You're, it's a good point, and, and it's a politically incorrect point, but cops, like this gentleman sitting right here, you don't get to sue me because when you're arresting me, I nudge you. I can't punch you, but I can, I'm going to go like this a little bit, maybe. You don't get to sue me. So a polite phone call between the parties. I'm really sorry. I'm sure you're a nice kid. He probably is an okay kid. Needs a haircut. Probably That's okay what Lance kid. says, too. But his dad needs an attitude adjustment as much as the kid does. You're not going to beat up Ezekiel Elliott, Dad? Come on, son. Ain't happening. They just went there 15 well, this guy's gotten... He's going for 30 minutes. Well, because he had, his, he had his 15 minutes when it happened. And he was told not to file charges because they would not go through. Because there was no evidence for him to file charges. Now that the NFL has decided that Zeke did nothing wrong in their eyes, now Kyle Johnson has decided, oh, well, let's put it in the hands of Las Vegas police. But don't you think that's a fake reasoning on the kids' part? Yes, absolutely. The reason I'm seeking justice is the NFL didn't hand down justice. He wants $50,000. So, Fish, do you think the NFL should have handed down justice? I believe that the league is starting to come around to the idea of, especially when it comes to drug use, but maybe in everything, why are we firing our best employees? Why are we suspending our best employees? Why don't we find a way to keep them employed and under counseling and under supervision and with guidance? Why are we taking Randy Gregory, who's a perfectly nice person, 
smart person wants to play football. Randy Gregory's got a problem with marijuana combined with a behavioral disorder. I don't think I'm telling not you. Not a bad right guy, now. but he's not I'm a bad guy. Randy Greg- there, there's, there's nobody in media in America that's talked to Randy Gregory more than I have. He's not a criminal. He needs help. Right. So, again, let's use your daughter as an example, same age as Randy Gregory. If she needed help, what would her employer tell her? F you. Go home. Sit on the couch. Eat bonbons. Play video games. We'll see you in two years. How does that help her? I think the NFL is coming around to the idea that that, that our anti- uh, antiquated idea, our archaic idea of, of drugs and emotions and psychology, that we need to move into the next century, this century, right. and not just be tolerant, but be helpful. And then more than that, my best example is Le'Veon Bell when he was in Pittsburgh. It seemed like he got suspended for the first four games every year for pot. How did that help the NFL? The well, how did it help him? Either, or either him, one. Or the Steelers, or the fans, or the sponsors, or the networks. What did it do? And, and about the third time that he got suspended for four games to start the NFL, didn't they not didn't they not realize he's not really learning a lesson? <laughs> <laughs> it's not working. Yeah. He who, smokes pot. Who are we teaching a lesson to here at this point? So Nobody. I, I'm about ready to applaud the NFL. And I've written this many times at 105.3 The Fan on the website, which is outstanding, and said it on the air. Randy Gregory has a chance to be the poster guy for how to do it right. He's got to do his part, and he's got a long climb. But I think Roger Goodell and the NFL have a part in this too, and, and I think it's possible that Randy Gregory may be the poster guy for how to decriminalize using marijuana to help you with mood problems, mental problems, emotional problems. And you know what? Right. Yes, yes. There we go. Big red, big red. I'm going to run so, from there a little out, by the way, one of these days. So, so Fish, tell me the difference. I, th- I think we all know this, but you're connected. Uh, the difference between the Randy Gregory situation and the David Irving situation, because everybody's brought up David Irving's name in the last two, three days. But I, in my opinion, there are two different scenarios. Randy Gregory wants to play in the NFL. He's good. He's a badass. He will play in the NFL again. Um, David Irving, on the other hand, is a huge talent. He's a badass, but has no. He he picks he picks his his personal desires, his personal preferences. He has no shits to give over his professional career. He has no desire. He would rather smoke pot than play in the NFL. So, absolutely. absolutely. He's in your rib. <laughs> I'm speaking, for, I'm speaking for fish. Absolutely. Randy, Randy likes football. David doesn't like the day to day business of right. practice and meetings and film study. He wants to be a professional athlete yeah, without yeah. doing the professional wants, things to make him a professional. Right. He wants to be, it's just like, you know, he also wants to be an actor. But, but he can keep doing his cheesy ass attorney well, commercials. But, he, but okay, good. That was but, terrible, by the way. But what if he. What if he studied acting instead of just standing in front of the camera and pretending? What if David Irving went to Hollywood and got an agent and got a, got a teacher and went and studied acting and worked his way up and, and gradually? And maybe, but he doesn't want to do that. He doesn't want to do the work for anything. He wants to be anything. on Ballers now. Yeah. He did, and he literally on Facebook, he, um, I didn't get involved, but I watched it, and a friend of mine got involved. He wants to be. He thinks that there's a character on Ballers that's based on him, and the first thing he thinks of is I should sue. Right. That's not how it works, son. And and by the way, David's not. He's no dummy. He's not a dumb guy at all. That's not how it works. You know that's not how it works. You should be. You shouldn't sue Ballers. You should be on Ballers. But you need to take acting lessons. You need to find an agent. And you, move, you need to move to Hollywood. You need to work your thing out with your ex. You need to work out the custody with your daughter. And you need to work at this. It just doesn't come. He thinks, he really does, and he's said this. He thinks, you know, I can, sh- I can just show up on, roll out of bed, show up on Sundays and get a sack. And the problem is he's right. Yeah, he could. But if he'd practice, he could get two sacks. And if he'd show up to work, he'd get three sacks. And if he wasn't high, he'd get four sacks. Well, if he'd show that he cared, 
and he doesn't, and he doesn't care. That Other much. people would care too for him, right? And he, coaching staff, players. The big difference you asked about the difference between Randy and David, and Randy has not run out of um, people in the locker room who want to help him. David did. I had two guys. I went to a guy on behalf of David, frankly, and said, "He's lost." He told me he's lost. He wants somebody to take him to lunch just so he's not lost. I'm not going to tell you who it is. You might, you, you might be able to narrow it down to two. Right. Two, if, you, if you follow the Cowboys, you might be able to figure it out. And this guy told me Absolutely. This. I, I stood in front of a meeting room one day and yelled at everybody, we've got to support. And David was standing right there. We, got, we support you. You guys that don't, you're wrong. We support you, David. We're with you, David. And then... This guy and David walked around the corner, and this guy got in David's face and said, I just put my balls on the line for you. Don't screw me. Yeah. And the next thing you know, and the next practice, David didn't show up. And that was the last. That was the last straw in that locker room. One of the, one of the leaders of this team put his balls on the line for David Irving, and David didn't care. Well, and I feel like David Irving has zero clout in the locker room, whereas Randy Gregory... Everyone would welcome him back in the locker room, and they would help him along. He hasn't worn out his welcome. No, David did. Is Everyone this the best knows. Podcast you guys have ever done? Oh, probably greatest would. podcast ever. Uh, David <laughs> Irving. I'm actually paying attention. Thank you. No, I have, I have, I have not seen her on, on her phone yet. So I mean, oh, she was there. Okay, well, can, oh. you, can you post links to our YouTube? Yeah, would you? <laughs> would you, 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 you? You probably have a bigger following than we do, so. She does. What's up, Red? Hey, your uh, Facebook Tolo thing, by the way, which Lauren is obviously the backbone of. She is the backbone of the Tolo page on Facebook. <laughs> oh, oh. A backbone of, I should say. It's really, it's very I'm unique. I know, but congratulations. It's a, it's a unique. Thanks, unique Mom. Family. We are the Drug Sports Podcast. I am IndyCar Tim. He is Big Red Lance Dorsett. We have a very special guest tonight, Mr. Mike Fisher, at Fish Sports on Twitter and everything else. From 105.3 The Fan, exclusive, exclusive. And, we, we man, we got a lot of insights tonight. Um, we are currently talking about Randy Gregory versus David Irving. Um, two different scenarios. Actually, two very similar scenarios. But two very different situations. Going completely opposite directions. Going opposite directions because David Irving has no desire to play football. He wants to play football, but he doesn't want to put in the work. And then, of course, Mr. Randy Gregory, who could be, what, the second or third defensive end on this team if he came back? Robert Where are we Quinn's, putting him? Robert Quinn's here now. So Robert Quinn's right, going to start. Right. And Tank Lawrence. Yep. So he's going to start. All right. And so, yeah, Randy Dude, Gregory. Dude, you roll Randy Gregory out there with him? In position to succeed. Wow. Yeah. Um, I, I talked to Rod Marinelli about this a couple weeks ago. Could you put – Could you? because you know how they put Crawford inside. Yeah. Could you put Tank inside? Crawford does not belong inside, in my opinion. Well, but as a, it's third down. It's third down. You don't like him? He, no, he does not have the swim move to get get around. All right, but he's a defensive end pass rusher that you would put a defensive tackle in a in, in, on no. third and seven. But not if you have Randy well, Gregory there. Yeah, and he, and he, you know, he didn't give me the keys of the city on it, but it makes sense to me because Tank Lawrence is stout enough right. to play inside. So could you line up Robert Quinn and, on, on third and seven? But would, uh, but can you imagine outside, that? Randy Gregory outside, but would Tank, Tank okay that move? Tank's not going to care. Tank will care. Ta- yes, I, I, I believe Tank will care because Tank's position is, is on the he's end. He's getting paid. He's that's yes, true, that's he, true. He is getting paid, dude. You got paid. But, he doesn't but need line the up now right, to get paid. That's right, true. But, but line up where we tell you to line up, but and same, do your job. But at the same yeah. time, you you still got to make the, this, some of these guys are prima donnas. We still have to make them. Happy. I don't think Tank's a prima donna. Do you? I'm not saying he and is. Nobody a, has I'm evidence. I'm not saying of he that. is a prima donna. But if we move him to the inside, maybe he gets his feelings hurt. <laughs> And that, that, that delves up I'm something playing, else. You know, but I'm, I'm going to move him inside once a game. I, I, would, love to, I would love to see it try. When you say once I, a I would, game. I would love to see it try. How many times is it? Right. How many, you know, it's a right. On third. It's on third, third down. Seven, it's once a game. Right. Um, I, sh- I will say this about Tank, and I wish more people knew this. He could have had surgeries twice in his career and said, I'm not playing anymore. I can't even feel my arm. 
and he kept playing. So he, he's not a prima donna. Right. He, right. He deserves credit for that. No, and he, no, I don't think we, anybody uh, thinks he is. Yeah, football war. You know, I don't call them warriors because actual warriors are actual warriors. Right. But football warrior, he's that. No, and dude, Tank Lawrence, dude, that. How does that draft pick look right now? <laughs> Good God. Yep. He's a stud, man. So I, we're not going to get into the Cowboys draft picks, but... But they've nailed a lot of them at the Dude, top. Dude, they have nailed yeah. everybody. Yeah. Man, we have gone so far off topic right All now. Right. Where's your run sheet? Where's your fancy run the sheet? The run sheets are... Look, hey, I have a run sheet. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what else? Yeah. Our run sheet was dictated by Mike Fisher being here. Because he's a badass. And we What's love Mike Fisher. Show? Next week's show, uh, we'll be right here in the same table, right. nine o'clock. So we're let's get into short shots. This is uh, my favorite, my favorite, my favorite subject, my favorite segment. What? No, I'm really not. Is he loopy? Uh, loopy, buzzy, or drunk? Hey, can you do this? I already did. Can you do it again? I don't think I need to, but I will. Could you? What does he fill that up with? Then he puts a drop of chocolate in it <laughs> <laughs> to make it a, it's a dessert treat. No, I was giggling because I can hear it in his voice. I put whatever I need to put in it. No, you're good. Um, so short shots. God, really? Y'all don't like that? that We're one. all drunk. Because I, I made that to be our like. That needs to be something else. It's horrible. Aww. But need like a. Oh, you did where? Well, I can't look at it right now. I'm on the air. Oh, I love well, you. I mean, we're having I'm cross sorry, conversations Fish. when we're on the Fish, air. So we're very, we're very, we're very responsible and professional. Yes. Very wow. So, hey. Kind of. Fish yes. and Lance. Are you guys tennis fans? When it comes to the majors, yes. I'll, well, there I'll, was a major. There this was. Weekend. There was. Are you and there was. I watched five hours and forty-four minutes of a tennis match. Dude, uh, was it only five forty-four? Because I thought it was I longer. Think it really was something like that. So we had a we had a major this weekend. We had the fu- finale today, and we had two of the greats fighting it out for uh, the Wimbledon championship. Um, Djokovic and Federer. I'm a big Djokovic guy. I'm actually a big Federer guy. Well, it, 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 I'm a guy of the who, semi, not Nadal. The semifinal may have been just as big when you had Federer and Nadal bat, battling it out. No, in the, in the, in the, yeah, in the that was the best. I mean, that was that was that was the best. <gasps> who hates tennis? Mark hates tennis. Why do you hate tennis, dude? You have to you, you have to lock tennis just so you could play the air guitar with the tennis racket. I mean, oh, I mean, Jesus show you a picture. <laughs> My oldest son, everybody says, looks like Rafael Nadal. You want to see a picture? Yeah. Been... No, I see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would say my work. son, it, Nate, is a handsomer version of Rafael Nadal. So, breaking Ooh. news. Can I show him on? Can I show him? Mike Fisher's son huh? is Rafael Nadal. How do I do it? Uh, we're gonna like producing on the air. We'll keep going closer, 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 closer. Keep going. No, you gotta keep going. Keep going. Keep going, fish. Keep going. You got, there you go. Right, right there. there. Right there. Oh, oh dude. Oh, here you go. Exclusive, exclusive. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> dude, I don't talk about tennis much, but when you got when you got Wimbledon, you got a major. Rock. Yeah. And you got Rafael Nadal, who did not make it. Rafa. Because he sucks. He did get a haircut. He's got much and shorter hair And that's why he now. sucks. He cut his hair. He's like Samson, Samson. in the Bible. I mean, he cut his hair, and now he can't play Does tennis. Does the Bible come up on this show quite a bit? No. no. Nope. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the first Bible reference ever, I believe. Thanks, <laughs> We had Federer and Djokovic. By the way... Federer, the greatest tennis player of all time, after Andre Agassi. What? Give me Agassi. Greatest tennis player of all time. Better than McEnroe? You just like his haircut. Uh, McEnroe is second. Uh, better than... Are Jimmy. we going to power rank tennis players right now? Jimmy Connors? Third. 
Uh, Let's go. Let's power rank tennis players right now. Yvonne Lindell. Fifth. Oh, come on. Man, I didn't like the dude because he won all the damn time, but he was, he was great. Third. I mean, fourth. <laughs> What's fourth? Who Who am I leaving off? The guy that's won more majors than anybody Stiffy else. Graf. Chris Everett. <laughs> Chris Everett Lloyd. She Chris, is Chris Everett Lloyd. Lloyd. She is not a dude. Chris Everett Lloyd is number one Debatable. in the women's. Chrissy Everett was married to uh, Greg Norman. Was. Mm. Wait, yeah. what? Yeah. Huh? What? The golfer? Yes. She was married to Wait, Greg Norman. Wait, no, 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 no. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Chris Everett? Greg Norman. Was married to Greg, Greg Nor- Norman, Greg the golfer? Greg Norman had Chris Everett. They were married? They were. Okay, I know. 2008 to 2009. Confirmed. Bam. But what works. the hell? We were married for one year? Was that a thing? Apparently, if they were married, jackass. How did you know that? Because I follow sports. All right, I have to apologize to Mike Fisher right now because we are producing off the air. And oh, I did not actually, know on that. the air, this is not off, and you are drunk. Oh, my God, you're way more. <laughs> you want to talk about drunk? I'm, yeah, I'm, Let's talk about you the last two days who didn't answer my texts or my phone calls. Because I was sleeping. Because I was sleeping. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, I had to come over here for a wellness check today. Well, you could have called a 30 for 30 on that marriage. Really? One year marriage. I didn't know it was a thing. One of the handful of greatest golfers of all time, one of the handful of greatest tennis players of all time. What went wrong? And they are. They're one of Do it, yeah. fish. Do it. it. Yes. Okay. Do it. Or just make it up as <laughs> we go along. Make it up. We'll make it up as we go hey, along. That's what we do. So, by the way, one of the, the greatest, thir- maybe the, the greatest Wimbledon Drunk. final of all time was today. I don't know if you guys saw that or not. Thank you. A, he has been hammered. I'm a tennis fan. You're hammered. I got shit that I can't see. I only okay. hear a little bit, but he here. tilts his head down, here. starts talking like this, and thinks he's a newsman. That's when it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, boy. So, you guys want, really, y'all want to talk about Wimbledon? No. no. Fuck it. All right, well, no way. Wimbledon happened today. That's all I care about. Hey, here's something official I want to talk about. Bud Selig? Yeah, bowl cut bud. Bowl cut bud. Have you seen his haircut? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, I also saw a story where he was not very nice to Barry Bonds. Oh, really? Uh, and neither were any of us because Barry Bonds is a piece of shit. Yeah, I guess. Uh, so short shot number two. Not that that matters. I'm just doing it anyway. But Selig says Barry Bonds was not likable and recounts misery of watching him break the home run record in his new book. Seems inappropriate. Well, he's not the commissioner anymore. But he was? Yeah, so kind of do whatever he wants, right? He's trying to sell a book. Trying to sell a book. While he was a commissioner and a used car salesman, he could only afford a $6 bowl cut haircut. Now he wants a book. <laughs> even though, <laughs> even though he, he owned the Milwaukee Brewers. Speaking of the worst haircuts. Before he was commissioner. In professional sports. Who? The, what? Uh, oh, Bud, Bud Selig. Well, besides Bud, no. we're talking about the owner of the Raiders. Oh, God. Oh, what? poor old Mark uh, Allen. Mark Allen. Yes, there you no. go. Another bull oh, cut. Mark Allen or? Oh, Mark Allen, right? No, it's no. No, uh, no, Mark, no Mark Allen is the new owner. You're talking about his dad? No. It, no Al the, Davis? The, Al Davis. The, the Mark son. Davis. Mark Davis. Mark Davis. Now we're all Mark drunk. Da- Mark Davis. We're has, all drunk. Mark we're Davis drunk. has the absolute yeah. worst haircut. Yeah. And he flies. He flies. He flies to the hairdresser to get his hair done. Oh, pays 600 Jesus bucks Christ. for a haircut. Well, it looks like that. That looks yeah. it at most absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Have you shit. seen my haircut? You have the same haircut I do, son. Oh. My bad. Who? Mark Davis? Mark Davis's wife? Is she hot? Yeah. She's hot. Is she, really? she is? Guess what? Shocker. Guess what? Guess what? Let's go to the research department and we'll find out. <laughs> yeah. Look Looking. Look it up right now. <laughs> we ain't saying she a gold digger. Okay, so, hey. But she ain't missing. I have no, no, to no. talk about. <laughs> Let's go to the ham cam and find out some research. Ham cam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys really have a ham cam? You should. 
No, we do now because you mentioned it. Oh, Jesus Christ. Here we go. This is officially turned on in. On August 7th, 2007, yeah. Barry Bonds officially yeah. became Major League Baseball's Al all-time leader. Al Mark Davis with his yellow bowl cut has a 10 home runs. runs. She looks like Harry Potter. Oh, God. I don't even know what's happening right now. Wow. This is officially turned into the greatest shit show of all time. What's her name? Hermione? 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 What are we looking at? His wife. That's wife. Is that him? Yes, look at that haircut, dude. So drunk. Oh. What does that tell you I can get? Oh, oh. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you so much. Uh, On August 7th, 2007, Barry Bonds became officially Major League Baseball's all-time leader in home runs. When he hit his 756th career bomb into the seats. Off of who? Did anyone? <laughs> <laughs> We're not going there. We're not. No. Was, wait. Was that? Don't was you that, think? Was that the Bassic home run? That's Bassic. Yeah. As a curator of the game, shouldn't Bud Sealing keep a keep his mouth shut? Yeah, probably. We have been responsible for helping Barry Bonds be likable. Uh, I disagree. I say no. Um, it, it, but he did at the time when it was happening. He was commissioner. He kept his mouth shut. Well, that was. I big agree big. with that. Well, that was big. Thanks. Um, I don't know what percentage of America hated Barry Bonds for doing that. And this goes back. Hey, so I wasn't alive in 1961. Not claiming to be alive in 1961, but there I were a lot of. Third, I was on my third marriage by then. Hey now, fucking fish. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> fish. So I, I would, I would, I would pose a question that whenever Roger Maris broke, what was that guy's name that played for the Yankees? Babe the Babe, big dude, Babe the Babe fat. Ruth. Babe Ruth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know Babe Ruth. So whenever Roger Maris broke Babe Ruth's home run, right. sixty-one. Great movie, by the way. No, it was a good movie. Yeah. Billy yeah. Crystal, yeah. Yeah. by the way. Um, there was a lot of people that were not on board with that, right? Correct. Like, he got death threats yes. when that was happening. So, whenever this was happening with Barry Bonds, of course, we're in social media. We're in... We, we got everything going on. Did he get death threats? Like, I wanted to threaten him, but did he get death threats publicly? Because you would dominate him. I would dominate baseball. <laughs> No, I hate Barry Bonds. I can't believe I even I hate Barry Bonds. Shit. He's an idiot. He's a cheater. Dude, I will hold no punches with him. Dude, there is no reason that he is in the record books with major in, in Major League Baseball for holding the home run record. And by, the, by the way, James, James nope. Garcia, my haircut Does not is work. perfect. Who? I think that history will go back and realize ah, steroids. Ah. No, I think history will go back in, in, let's say, I don't know, 50 years. Do you think they'll even care about steroids? No. No. And 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 that's why I think Barry Bonds will be forgiven. You know, Pete Rose, how many greenies did Pete Rose take? Dude. Double header. Way too many, an illegal number of greenies. Do you think Pete Rose is a Hall of Famer? Is there is there a well, legal all, number of greenies? Just like when I mentioned Hitler earlier. <laughs> the the show, We're not uh, talking about Hitler. It's Pete Rose. Rose. Pete Rose in the Hall of Should Pete Rose be in the Hall of Famer? The two enders of a talk show, but well, well, I mean, of course he is. He's not. He's not a legend of the game. No, he's he's a Hall of Famer. Who cares? And he's not in there. Yeah. So this for the same reason that Pete Rose should be in the Hall of Fame. Barry Bonds should not be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I, I disagree. The oh. steroids and greenies before that, and then the invention of spectacles before that. All right, agreed. A, a guy was born without good eyesight, but then they invented glasses. Now he gets to be a baseball player. Well, that's cheating. Why do you get to Is work? it? Is it the same thing? It's exactly the same thing. Advanced medicine came along and said, now we can use steroids, and you can, you can stay fresher longer. Okay. What's the difference? Okay, no, 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 no. That's a different. That's a different argument, though. If steroids are going to be legal in Major League Baseball, then it's legal for everyone. So all of those records, stats should count. Okay, I'm taking you down. But it was not. Wormhole here. But it was but not legal. First time that glasses were invented, whenever that was, 
Ham Cam Research Department. Oh, uh, she'll find out. She'll and tell there you. was a shooting she'll tell exhibition. You. There was a shooting competition, and one guy walked up with glasses. Who the week later earlier hadn't had glasses. I get guarantee you his competitor was going, "Hey, whoa, whoa! What are those? What are those glass things on your face? You can't wear those." This was in uh, before the Bible. I don't know when. It was. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, God. Don't you we think? actually have stats for that. So, um, so what you're saying is that Barry Bonds and his steroids were a fair advantage that everyone had access to. And, and who and yeah, should who, have used Which ones didn't use them? That's a short list. Did which, Roger Maris use steroids? That, that was before his time. So, no. He probably okay. used greenies. But the other thing Probably. he used is a 162-game schedule instead of 154. Versus 154. That's why people hated him, because he was desecrating the great Babe Ruth right. and getting more games to but do. But he it. also played for the same team, which is really weird. I don't, very I don't weird. Get very that. weird. I don't get to that. Have hated Roger Maris. As a Yankee. North Dakota, what, North Dakota right? Yes. He's a white guy with a crew cut from D- yep. the Dakotas who's just trying as hard as he can. Very weird. I follow you. I disagree with you on the Barry Bonds thing. Um... Oh, it's so hard to disagree with you. It's just modern. It's just modern technology. Then, then the baseball didn't catch up with the we're players. Never, did the game did? Then why did American Congress have such an issue with it? What are you really? You really want the answer, or do yeah, you already know? No, it? no, no, no. Why? Why was it a bit? Because I really don't know. If everyone's, if it's a made available to everyone, if everyone can do steroids, the greatest way to get elected is to wear the flag like a blanket. You wrap yourself in the flag, and you poo-poo every single person that ever looked crossways at the flag, and then people vote for you. That's why. To, to say that baseball is pure sounded right to voters, even though oh, in, their, yeah. in their heart of hearts, baseball's not pure. It's just, a, it's just a business. Yeah. But those politicians played political games and wrapped themselves in the American flag. It was a damn shame. No, you're absolutely right. I will not argue with that. I... I hate Barry Bonds. I hate what he made of the game. Um, and you, I, you hate I, Mark McGuire too. He did the same shit. Did the same exact shit. Yeah. Yeah. You hate Sammy yeah. Sosa. You hate Raphael Palmeiro. I hate nineteen ninety eight. Sammy Sosa is, is becoming a I white hate, man. Yeah. Hey, I hate nineteen ninety eight and what that made baseball. Because everyone left baseball in nineteen ninety eight because of that. There was a. Ho- but you can't be anti Bonds. So nineteen ninety four. Be- okay, if we're gonna go back. 1994 is when the strike happened, and everyone left baseball in 1994. Right. 1998 was supposed to be the reason they came back. Right. And that was because of Sammy Suser and Barry Bonds. Right. Not Barry Bonds, sorry. Um, Mark McGuire. Mark McGuire with their home run chase. But your boy, Rafael Palmeiro, was over there doing the same thing. He was. Yes, and that's... F- <laughs> then why didn't he hit 60 home runs? Because he's old. Because he, he moved. I, I don't have the numbers in front of me. Who moved? No. He moved from 10 to 30. <sighs> and Barry Bonds moved from 15 to 60. So I'm okay. I'm okay with steroids. I'm okay with performance-enhancing drugs. If everyone does it, make it available to everybody so they can all hit 50 home runs, they can all hit 60 home runs, and make it exciting for everybody. Yeah. I have no problem with that. But in 1998... It wasn't available to everybody, and it was frowned upon, and we had... The hell if it wasn't available to everybody. We had the worst dudes had no fraud in Major League Baseball history after the 1919 uh, White Sox or Black Sox scandal, because it was a scandal. It was terrible. What's up, Jeb? What up, J-E-B? Um, and it gave baseball a black eye. Yeah, you know what the difference is, though? The, in the Black Sox scandal, a team was trying to lose. Right. In steroids, a team was trying to win. Players, individual players, are trying to That's win. Why, like betting on, I don't have, I don't care if a team, if a guy bets on his team to win, I don't want him to bet on his team to lose. Right. P. That's Rose. What? What's our? What's our? Let's talk about P. Rose. Hall of Fame or not? Yeah. Uh, 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 Absolutely, lead, he's Hall of Fame. Lead pipe cinch, Hall of Famer. He. Uh, uh, why isn't he in there? Because because the purists want to pretend that this is pure. But it's not the purists' decision. The decision yeah. is the commissioner of baseball. Not well, but the base, but the baseball writers are the, the curators of that. And they're museum, all old. And they're all old. 
and they're all white, and, and they all hang on to this pretense that, you know, it's the same pretense in politics, the same pretense in the church, that, that there's a purity that, that right. doesn't really exist. It's not reality. Right. And, and baseball clings to that, and it's unfortunate. So do you envision a time... Um, in 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 baseball future our our future yeah uh when Pete Rose is granted a spot I, in I'm, baseball hall of fame in our in our lifetime the next commissioner i'm surprised this commissioner hadn't done no it. i'm surprised this commissioner hasn't done it too because and i do this on the and i don't know very i don't know enough about the baseball hall of fame I, i'm i'm a, a beer and a half in but the, i know about pro football hall of fame right. which is it's too exclusionary it's too exclusive it's uh, there, there's these incredible players that we grew up with that will never get a sniff of the Hall of Fame, but when we watched them, we were going, "Oh my gosh, that's a, that's the most incredible player I ever saw." But he won't get in because of timing and politics and foolishness. Right. And so, my belief is incoming. Whether it's Pete Rose or Cliff Harris, better put them in before they die. Yep. Yep. Because it's no fun when they're dead. It's no fun to watch some guy's granddaughter go up there and accept a trophy. Yeah, nobody cares about that. So you're going to... Who, who nobody? No, if Cliff Harris gets in after he dies... It, then, then, then it's not... It's, it's not, not the same. It's not what it could have been. Right. right? So, uh, RJ Choppy and I argue about this all the time. He goes, well, there's not that many great players. Yes, there are. Yeah, there's a lot. There's that many great players. The Dallas Cowboys... I did a story on this the other day. You can see it on the 105 Through the Fan website, I believe. Cliff Harris was, was the all-70s, all-decade safety... He's the best yeah, safety yeah. in the NFL for the decade of the 70s. He's the only guy on the all-70s team on defense to not be in the Hall of Fame. Drew Pearson is on the all-decade team of the 70s. He's the only guy on offense to not be in. How can you be the best player of a decade at your position yeah. and not be in the Hall of Fame? It, it, because it, who votes for the Hall of Fame? Okay, so, but well, who votes, but also the the exclusionary system where, I don't have this in front of me either, but it's usually, it's like five guys plus two. Plus, why, why can't 15 guys go into the Hall of Fame at the same time? What because if that's against the running? rules. What, what, if, what if there's a year when, I don't know, you know help me with some names, but you know, DeMarcus Ware, Jason Witten, and two guys on the Bills, and two guys on the Raiders, and two guys on the Broncos. Okay, that's ten guys. They, they all should go in. Nope, they can't. Sorry. Because we have a limit. That's the way it works. Why would you have a limit? That's why the Hall of Fame is a farce. And the voting process is a farce. Um, it's, it's East Coast biased. There's that. The, Let's talk about how many. Uh, and I don't, I don't want to bring the. I don't, this is not a thing. It's a thing. I don't want to talk about it. How many 70s Steelers are in the Hall of Fame as opposed to 70s Cowboys? Right. Yes, the 70s Steelers won four. Uh, Super Bowls, 70s Cowboys won two. How many NFC Championship games were the 70s Cowboys in? The majority. The ma- oh, well, Cliff Harris played in five Super Bowls. Cliff Harris? <laughs> How is five. Cliff Harris not in the Hall of Fame? Charlie Waters. Two Tall Jones. Harvey Martin. Yeah. All of them my, are worthy. My, what I would suggest to you is, you, you guys are right about the Cowboys. You're Cowboy-centric, and that's fine. But... But the same thing is true in Tampa and Minnesota and Seattle and San Diego. The same thing's true. Jim Marshall played defensive end for the Minnesota Vikings for 20 years. Is Jim Marshall not in the Hall of Fame? Not in the Hall of Fame. Probably because he ran the wrong way. He ran the wrong way. 20 years. (laughs) That one time he ran the wrong way. (laughs) That one time he ran the wrong way. He ran the wrong way. Um, uh, Four Super Bowls and a starter for 20 years, and Jim Marshall's not in. Because the voters are going, well, we already put Alan Page and Kyle Allen. Is Frank Tarkenton in the Hall of Fame? Frank Tarkenton is, yeah. Okay, yes. good. No, so, yes, four so Super Bowls in the up. 70s. Open it up. Four you Super Bowls. This, this year, by the way. This year is the centennial year. They're saying we'll put, we're going we're gonna to put five oldies in. So that helps. It should be 20, but they're putting in five. That'll help. Who picks the five? Uh, I assume it's the same voting It's, it's the same damn riders. Group. But, you know, oh. Ferris will get another shot. Uh, Drew Pearson will get a shot. They're not going to get in. You guys know Tommy Nobis, right? Yes. He's the greatest Atlanta Falcon ever. He's not in the Hall of Fame. Nope. Are there any Atlanta Falcons in the Hall of Fame? Uh, I I Let's start a petition and get Fish a vote. Why doesn't Fish have a vote for the Hall of Fame? Why doesn't he have a vote? Shereen Williams 
represents this area He's and does a, a fantastic sports writer. job. Um, no, yeah, no. I, it's yeah. a thankless yeah. job. It's a lot of work. But maybe we need more than one. So it ain't maybe. the same as the Baseball Writers Association. What do we have, like, ten people in, in DFW that are part of the Baseball Writers? So is, is it is it all sports? Is it five years after you retire that you're eligible for all sports? Football for football, it's five years. Well, I know football is, but is it I'm is it the sure. same for, no. for everybody? No. I'm not sure. Oh, Jeb says yes. Hey, by the way, what's up, Jeb? How you doing? He's got his beer. He's a good dude. He's a 12 pack in, and we're not, by yeah, the way. This is the longest radio show I've done in 15 years. Is it? Yes. Since you were on uh, KLIF 11, the Mindy 1190. Yeah. Well, me and uh, Fish Nato. We, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Where's Nate? We, sh- we should have Nate on. Uh, I had him killed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh hell. hell. As, as well you should. <laughs> exclusive, exclusive. So, Fish, here's something you need to talk about. Yes. Uh, the NBA next year is set to implement coaches' challenges. You've heard this? Yeah. I know he's heard this. It's a trial basis for one year. Um, they agreed unanimously to approve coaches' challenges for one year. All right. You ready? Let's go. So I'm doing a radio show. I'm in Arizona. Give it to me, Fish. Super Bowl. Give it to me, Fish. Push, push. That's not what that says. That's and not. George Young, the general manager, late great general manager of the Giants, is my guest on the show. And this must be 1995, I guess. And he's he was the pusher for um, what they what has come to be called replay, which is the dumbest name mm-hmm. ever because right. it has nothing to do with replay. It should be called review referee play. Or review, There's, yeah. Do you hear that? Do you hear that? Do you hear that? Referee play. Referee, referee play. Referee play. I've been writing it for 20 yes. years, 25 years, and awesome. nobody ever admitted it. <laughs> so, George Young is saying, well, we're going to use TV cameras and video to help officiating. I said, but George, the TV camera lies. He goes, oh, what do you mean? I said, the TV camera distorts. It's a piece of glass with a tube and a cord. It's not better than a man's eyes. Yeah. And he said, oh, it's absolutely better than man's eyes. I said, Mr. Young, even if it is, after it goes through the glass and the tube and the cord, then where does it go? He goes, what do you mean? I go, to the it man's goes eyes. to a man's eyes. It's still the judgment of a human. So why not eliminate the glass and the tube and the cord, save ourselves hours and hours and hours of waiting, and do it the way we used to do it when we were kids, which is the traffic cop said, stop. What'd you do? Stop. Did you argue with him and said, well, you know, yeah, but the, but I caught the tip of the ball. The traffic cop says, go. What did you do? You go. go. The way officiating used to be when I was a kid is when the, when the umpire or the ref said, you're out. You're out. And I officiated quite a bit in my 20s. And I had two great teachers who told me on a bang-bang play in baseball, softball, whatever, let them argue for, uh, let them argue for a second. Let him argue for 10 seconds. You let him even cuss you out if it's close. Because it was close. You're not 100% sure you're right. You gave it your best shot. Right. So he gets to argue a little bit, and then what does he do? He goes in the dugout, and that's the end of it. The NFL now, what do we do with officiating now in the NFL with the call on Sunday? We're still talking about it on the following Thursday. How is that good for football? By the way, Des called it. it, it they, they should <laughs> unplug the cameras. They should tell all the Dean Blandinos to go back home, yeah. let the referees referee, make them full-time. I don't need a referee on Sunday. Are they still not Sunday. full-time? No, they are not full-time. Dude, have, right. a, have them are lawyers and attorneys. They're lawyers well, attorneys, and attorneys. And all, that, all that shit. And, and, and salesmen. They make, they make more money than God. And they back still in the day, it was $1,500 per game. That was the 80s. Break, hire full-time officials and tell them you are in charge of the game. You, not a TV camera. Look, it's not great Dean idea. Blandino drinking a martini with his feet up on the ottoman in Manhattan because right. he's watching TV. They in the office. Well, decide right. whether Des right. Bryant caught right. it. He's watching TV in New York. Right, right. I got a guy on the field in Green Bay looking right at it. Right or wrong, I live with that guy's eyes. I don't live with that guy's eyes. But this is where we're going. This is the future of the NFL. And now, apparently, this is the future of the NBA. So the NBA already has replay. They already have the, which the, the stinks. referees. Which stinks. Can walk to the sideline to see 
Um, okay, who who touched it last? We've all watched an NBA game. It, it was affect, in the playoffs. It affected it. It affected the national championship. It affected the national championship in college basketball. Yes. Um, and they got it wrong. And, and they, they got absolutely it wrong. got it wrong. They slapped the ball out of your hand. They Replay. absolutely got it wrong. And again, when we were kids, if I slapped the ball out of your hands, it's off me. I slapped it out of your hands. Replay made it look like I don't know. Maybe the guy his la- his, his, his it, 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 it tipped his pinky nail. finger on the on the way out. Yeah, well, you know what? If you didn't have that pinky nail to <laughs> snort Red coke off stopped. of, maybe it would hit it. Green light go. <laughs> Red light, you stop. Snort That's what officiated should be. Coke Green light, off you go. Of. I say it's a touchdown. It's a touchdown. That's it. Des caught it, by the way. Of course he Ar- did. Already said that. So, Fish is not on board with the NBA's. It's just more jibber jabber. And it's going to delay more games. It will make games right? longer, just like it makes football here's games the, here's longer. Here's my best evidence of it, and this will happen in basketball. In football, Aikman and Buck. And there's a controversial call, did he catch or not? And Aikman looks at the replay and says, well, he clearly caught it. And Buck, who's just as smart, looks at the replay and says, oh, Troy, that, that clearly bounced. Now what do you do? Well, you guys just looked at the same replay as, that Dean Blandino looked at. This is going to happen in the NBA. Well, that's clearly goaltending, Charles. No, it's not, Ernie. Oh, that would be so great. Where are we going to get? It, it gets us nowhere. It's, it's, it's fake. It's advancing. Chuck and Shaq arguing about shit like that would be awesome. Well, that that's football though. I mean, that's basketball. That's what people want to see on the on that show. Arguing is them arguing. That's why. Just like now, they want to see us arguing. I'd like to see in a fist fight. Oh, it's gonna happen. This a drunken fist fight. The first of those three things you've already got handled. You should watch. (laughs) It's gonna happen. (laughs) Don't make me flip the table on your ass. Fish, I don't know what kind of baseball fan you are. Um, My boy. <laughs> have you ever heard of stealing first? I heard about this, and I, I have not read up on it, but I'm about to, to tell you. Please, please. I'm is, about yes. to tell you. So the Atlantic League, which, which is a, we talked which, about earlier which is probably the same a month league, ago. Which is the same league that has gone with the uh, robotic the, umpires. The robotic umpire. Yeah. So the umpire behind the plate has an earpiece in. The pitch comes in. It, it comes down, tells him, ball or strike, he calls it there. So, I, which is idiotic. Stealing first. Well, no, I don't know if that's the case. He can still call balls or strikes, right? The umpire is not calling balls or strikes. He's being told. He's, being, to- he he's being told what to call. Then why is he there? Because he's a figurehead. I want to be a figurehead so bad. So, the you've Atlantic a, League of American of Baseball of has... Has signed an agree- a three-year agreement with Major League Baseball. And this is to test out new rules. Uh, which is disturbing. Because these new rules are so disturbing. Okay, so how do you steal first? We're getting there. We're waiting on you to tell us how you steal Call first. Tease. We're going to take a break right now. Shut up. We have no breaks. <laughs> which I need one. I, I, I need to pee really bad. Go pee. We'll talk about it while you're gone. No, I, I, I want to hear. I want to hear this. I'm gonna hold it. So, part of the three-year agreement with Major League Baseball um, permits Major League Baseball to use the league to experiment with new rules. So this week, the L- ALPB. God, it's hard to say. Drunk hosted their All-Star oh, so, game. So now you're admitting that you're drunk. Uh, you're drunk. We've gone to a new level. Folks. You're drunk, sir. We're all drunk. <laughs> We're all drunk. Let's say thanks. So the poor ALPB, by the way, which stands for the American League of Professional Baseball, hosted their all-star game. Technology ruled like it does for our podcast usually. Um, so the new rules for the ALPB, um, the pitcher is required to step off the rubber in order to attempt a pickoff. That is not the case in Major League Baseball. Uh, one foul bunt is permitted with two strikes before the strikeout is called. All right. So you are you following me? Yep, I got yes. it. Got All it. right. Um, a check swing rule has been made more batter friendly, which I don't get. It's supposed to be monogamous. No, if you swing, you swing. I don't get it. Yeah, it's a check swing or it's not. But here's the big one. The batters Fish may still first it. on any pitch not caught by the catcher. What? 
So what we're talking about is the same thing as the strike three rule. When you swing a strike three, the, it's a pass ball. The ball's gone. You can run to first. Sure. This is now true of of any count during the pitch count. So if it's a wild pitch or a pass ball, it's can, it's 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 zero and one. I can hold my fat. It's ass. zero and one. What, what if what if he does catch the ball? Doesn't matter. Well, you're not going to try to. You might. Well, you can. Catch him. But why would you? Because there's a guy on third. And you can double steal. Yeah. It's a double steal situation. It's the stupidest thing ever. It hey, won't, it won't but be. here's Go ahead. here's the ridiculous part of it is that Major League Baseball has implemented these rules into the Atlantic League as a tryout. So while this may not happen, probably won't happen in Major League Baseball, they're looking at it. Right? So you're 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 the batter. You're 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 zero and one on the count. Uh, zero and two. I'm zero and two. You're zero and two. I'm zero and two. I'm running. If I, yeah. I, I, you're zero and two, and there's pass, a pass ball. I'm holding it. Freaking... No, not a pass ball. I, I'm down zero two. I'm not a good hitter. There's a guy in third. Pitchers. Here comes the pitch. This would be great for pitchers. I'm yeah. running to first. And it's and a my, pass and ball. My guy in third's gonna score. Dude, you run. You know, I. It doesn't it, matter what the count is. You run to first. It sounds idiotic as hell, but. I kind of like it. It's not it's not baseball, but it's a fun new idea but, of a different sport. Well, I mean, we're <laughs> hey, yeah, fish, for a different fish, sport. Fish, it fish, sounds like hockey. It's fish, fish, great. We're, just, we're you know, changing. You just all substitute in and run around anyway. We we're changing. Want. We're changing all the damn rules of all the sports anyway because football is still not football the way we used to watch it years ago. But it's it's, it's I mean, but my question is is we're still I know guys are. Bigger, stronger, Ooh, faster, and 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 shit like that happens. But it's still it's not football. Is this messing with the fabric of the game of baseball? The, like, like what you're talking about, the fabric of football. You're talking is about football. With, but it's probably gonna, it's saving people lives. I, I, I do understand. The fabric of and, baseball, and you know, greats like Tony Dorsett are 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 living with, uh, you know, uh, whatever it's called, where they CTE, get, yeah, and all right. CTE and all, all that stuff. And and that's tragic. If, uh, if football it, it, doesn't it change, your grandson won't Absolutely. play football. Yep. No way will he play football. Well, There'd be no and, reason to. How do we get on that? Well, because we're talking about changes of sports. Changes changes Whereas in rules of professional baseball sports. Baseball is just trying okay. to have score another run per game. Why? No football baseball. Made, baseball is trying to instill excitement. And they're otherwise, and I, and I think, I think, I think game. this does. Like, think, I'm not I, bored by baseball. I love baseball. I will watch baseball every day. I will go to the the ballpark and I will watch it start to finish from wherever in the ballpark. I will watch it on TV from start to finish. But okay. there are other people who make fun of me for doing that. They want to instill some excitement. No, I applaud you for doing and it. Speed but it. If you and tell speed. me, well, fish, now you should watch baseball. Because a guy might steal first. That's yeah, really that's not, not going to change happen. my game plan. Nope, will not Sunday. happen. Sorry. I agree. Okay. Lance hates baseball. I don't hate baseball. I played baseball. I feel like you hate baseball. No, I, 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 no, I don't. I don't hate baseball. But I think I kind of like the idea of, of stealing first. It, no, I. It, you know what? It, but it's not baseball. It's it's not. But again, the rules of all professional sports change. They evolve. It it, it happens. If something changes Still, all the damn time. So, Fish, I know you've probably already heard this. It's getting close During to the uh, we, CBA the talks up. with the NFL, um, the NFL owners have reportedly given a proposition for an 18-game schedule, which is no news. Hey, hey. They've been wanting that for 10 years. But? Um, but this proposition will limit players to 16 games. Have Bullshit. you heard this? Bullshit. Oh, yeah. Bullshit. I know Fish has heard everything. Nothing is new to so, him. So the NFL owners proposed having an 18-game schedule with a 16-game limit for players, meaning that the backup quarterbacks would be forced to play in at least two games, and superstar quarterbacks like Mahomes and Brady would be forced to sit for at least two games every season. Um, of course, it's not just quarterbacks. But every player would be forced to sit at least two games. Why, why, why are we asking um, for trouble? Teams with better overall depth would be rewarded. 
other yes, teams that's true. would suck. When, when I... Expand the roster? No, same roster. When I find out that this is the week that and I'm the Bills and the Cowboys are playing me and this is the week they're going to set out Dak Prescott and Zeke Elliott because they think they're going to beat me, the Cowboys will lose that game. But would you right. send them out on the ass. same week? You wouldn't send them out the well, same week. Well, you're sending out somebody. What, what are you doing with Amari Cooper? Right. What are you doing with Tyron Smith? What are you doing with Zach Martin? You're sitting out a bunch of somebody for two but games. But you're not yeah. going to sit Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott on the same week. No, but you sit out Ezekiel Elliott and, I, I mean, how many you got to sit out in a week? Uh, whatever, however it adds up to. Like, you got to sit out everybody at least two weeks. I mean, what a ridiculous, I mean, what a ridiculous effort and strategy. At some point, you're sitting out Tyron Smith and... Agreed. And, and the Bills are going to find out, so, oh, oh, you're not playing Zeke Elliott against us because you think you're going to beat us? They will kick their ass. Agreed. That's ridiculous. I am all for an 18-game schedule, but not at this expense. I can so, give you an 18-game schedule if you'll, you, you... Okay, you're the owners. I will give you an 18-game schedule. If you get preseason games down to one, or or, to. or 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 who was it? That, was, it was it was it was it Montana? Joe Montana? Did he not say you could go to an eighteen game schedule right now if you cut two minutes out of each quarter? That's true too. Oh God! If you cut two minutes out of each quarter, okay, but that's better than this stupid idea. No, agreed. But how, that's still but, ridiculous. But how about this? How many preseason games do they play in college? None. Uh, none. How many preseason games do they play in high school? No, but the season games they play in middle school. No, so, so the the Louisville Flag Football League doesn't play preseason games. But you know why they six. play preseason in the pros for money. So let's convert that money to the two money. regular season games, but dump the preseason games and the per game checks for the players go up X percent because they're playing two games. Uh, agreed. We got a deal. How easy was that? Uh, the CBA is settled. Yeah, uh, the. It, the NFL players. So, are you going to meet stupid. with the owners and the CBA? So, you're going to go meet with the CBA. You're going to be there. I would be fascinated. And you're going to do that. I would be fascinated to be on the side. I'm, I'm not pretending I'm smart enough. I'd be fascinated to be on the side of the players' association, the, the union, to help them understand. You guys have been going since 1972, and you've never won anything. You've never won one negotiation. You've never got anything. ever. I right. talk to play. I still talk to players who think because they have the absolute worst players association right. of any major league. Sport. These young players think that when they go to Oxnard and don't have two a days, they think that they won something. Like two two days, oh, you could have two a days. You just wouldn't bash each other Dude, because it's so in, bad. in a salary cap era, you wouldn't. You still wouldn't tackle. But two a days, not having two a days, makes you a worse player. Right. You get less practice, right. less reps. You know who would like this day and age, their two-a-days? Deion Sanders. He would love that. He would love this day and age, their two-a-days. David Irving still doesn't want to do this shit. Oh, Jesus the seat, Christ. The, the Players Union boys needs to say, we will give you this, but you got to give us these five things, if I could do them off the top of my head. Article 46, Dead. We are done letting the commissioner suspend people for a million games just because he's in a bad mood. Two, the Bitch. decriminalization of marijuana. You're, you're going to be the last company in America that fires people for smoking pot. Three, I want guaranteed money. Why not? All the other leagues have it. All the other leagues have it. Exactly right. The average NBA player makes $7 million guaranteed. The average NFL player makes $1 million non-guaranteed. It's ridiculous. I did not know that. It's unbelievable. There's no guaranteed money? No. In the NFL? There's no guaranteed guaranteed money. Like, uh, like You can guaranteed. get it. You can negotiate they guaranteed money. call it money. guaranteed money. You can, get, you can negotiate guaranteed money, but in the NFL, it's a no-brainer. You, it's the, your contract's guaranteed. 100%. Uh, I don't want any more preseason games. Period. I don't need preseason games. We all know it. I've told you guys this story before. 1990. One, I go down to uh, Austin for training camp. I go to Dave Wanstead, the defensive coordinator. I say, can you help me out? I need to do a prediction of who's going to make the roster. And he says, well, I'll get back to you. And I go to Norv Turner. Can you give me a prediction of who's going to make the roster on offense? Later in the day, they both handed me two sheets of paper. It was everybody that was going to make the <laughs> roster. The opening day of training camp. They knew. Yeah, they And every once in a while, some, somebody pops up and surprises you, or there's an injury. We do not need training camp to. We don't even need training camp to no. determine who's going to make the roster. 
Right. So these handful of things, the NFL Players Association should simply say, we will not play in 2021 unless you give us these five things. See ya. And they would and, and, yeah, they did it Baseball did it. Yeah, baseball's the most powerful, by the way. And that's why. Players Association, yeah. Because they were willing uh, to walk yeah. away. It is the, and I no, this isn't my job. It's their job. Who am I to tell Tyron Smith walk away from football? Yeah, say goodbye to millions and millions of dollars. Right, because he won't do that. Well, but but baseball did. And, well, no. And baseball's young uh, children and grandchildren and great grandchildren now benefit from right. what guys did in the seventies. Kurt Flood, Andy Messerschmidt. Does the NFL have a Kurt Flood and nope. an Andy Messerschmidt? Maybe not. But 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 if they get one. They can win because the, the players' association needs to win. In the NBA, the agents run it. In baseball, the union runs it, and in football, the owners run it. And the players are not partners in the NFL, and that's a damn shame. So, but for some reason, the biggest fucking uh, play for the owners is they want more money. Like that's part of the CBA right now. The owners say we want more money. Do the players understand though? That if the owners get more money, they also will get more money. I'm not an I'm not an attorney. I'm not, not a lawyer. Not guaranteed money. Not guaranteed, yeah. Well, no. Do the NFL players deserve guaranteed money? I, I'm I'm literally going out and take putting my life on the line for the silver and blue. Right. A basketball player gets it. A baseball player gets it. Why would I not get it? So would the owners not, would Jerry just go, well, then go play basketball, go play baseball? I'd be fascinated. I'm not going to pick on Jerry. He's my guy. I'd be no, fascinated. I love Jerry. No, he wouldn't. And I don't think he would do that. I'd be fascinated to see what the Joneses would do if the, if the Cowboys player said, we're not playing. I don't know what he'd do. Are we going to run into 1987 all over again? And again, that, that collapsed because not enough players um, chose to no. do what I wish they would have done, although I understand it. They, they got bills to pay. Um, it is a little different in football. You, got, you have a three-and-a-half-year career in football on average. Right. Whereas in baseball, you can go on strike for three years and come back and play baseball at 39 now. Yep. So yep. it is different. I, I get it. And I don't, I'm not telling the players in the NFL what to do. I'm just saying, if you want to fix this, this is what you should have to do. You know what R.J. Choppy's idea is? <laughs> And it's not often I quote an R.J. Choppy. No, you don't usually <laughs> so do often that. anybody quotes R.J. Choppy. And we did this on Twitter, and then a bunch of people said, no, it's, you couldn't do that because of this and this wrinkle and that wrinkle. But the idea generally is fine. You tell The player association tell you players in 2020, save your money. Get ready. Right. And in, and in week eight, on Monday of week eight, walk out. And the owners say, where are you going? And they say, call the player association. Yeah, we're not, we're not playing, or week ten, or whatever. Maybe I think Choppy's idea is on the verge of the playoffs. Right. What? Well, yeah, you got to do it early enough so all the teams are still in the playoffs. Right. We're taking your playoffs away from you, boys. Yeah. You're not going to get TV revenue from playoffs. You're not going to get ticket revenue. Obviously, we're not playing. I bet you the NFL would settle that week. Right. They'd give you well, marijuana. You, think. you would think. They'd give you marijuana. Is they'd marijuana? Give you Dude, article that article is the six. biggest. That, that that is the biggest is thing. Is marijuana the, the biggest? It's the yeah. biggest thing on the table. Subject on the Article table. Article 46, marijuana, preseason games, guaranteed money. Oh, and CTE study. Oh. The NFL should spend a billion dollars, a trillion dollars, on saving its own. So I had to explain to Lauren the other night what CTE is um, because she wasn't sure. Uh, Why were we talking about it? No, nah, we were talking about it for some reason, and I, and I said that uh, players are concerned about CTE, especially after they retire. Um, and we talked about uh, Junior. I brought up Junior Seau, who offed himself in the sake of CTE study. Right. Um, and the study came back. He had CTE. So, I mean, it's, it's not like it's not a deal. It's not a deal. Like, it's not a... CTE is not fictitious. It's a, it's a, it's a real thing. And the Players Association is concerned about CTE as well they should be. Um, but they also have to pay attention to their own. Uh, they have to pay attention to the current players. You can't just disregard um, the NFL Players Association um, to the NFL, right? Like, 
at some point, you got to come to an agreement with this, for the CBE. My, my agreement is that the players coming in the NFL now know that there's a risk. Players coming in the NFL in 1970 didn't know there was that kind of risk. They had no idea. And I think if you studied this hard enough, Jerry, I hope you're not listening now, I think you would... You, oh, you he might, listens. You might come to the conclusion that, that sports is doing to these players what the tobacco industry once did to smokers. Ah, yeah. eh, you're fine. Ah, it's sexy. It's sexy to smoke a cigarette. Merriman, look, look at the movies. They're doing the movies. How, look how sexy it is. And, and the, the NFL is going to get caught here. And the NFL is going to have to pay a trillion dollars in settlements anyway. Why not spend a trillion dollars studying it, a trillion dollars helping the victims of it? And then at the same time, today's players, I don't, you know, I want you to know what you're getting into. Because, I, because you're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're not going to live to 90 if you play no. pro football. So let's understand that and then come and take the risk if you want to. Most guys, mm. not most guys, all guys, they'd all still do it. They'd all still do it. You know, I, you're, you're, you're not going to be able to move your hand when you're 50. I don't care. I'll move my other hand. That, that's fine. But you got to tell them. And they didn't tell them. So, like, today, draft picks this year, they have an orientation with the team. Uh, they go into the Cowboys, um, briefing room, whatever, their draft picks, one through whatever, seven. They're in there. Do you think the... Cowboys or the NFL, there's a representative from the NFL to tell them here are the dangers of being in the league. Well, how about if the NFL PA is in charge of that and the NFL supports their campaign to say, talk to your doctor about the risks of football. That's all you'd have to do. But along with that... But do you think that happens? No. Oh. Talk with your so doctor either. about the risk of football. Here's a banana. Learn how to put a condom on it. And here's a financial <laughs> advisor. <laughs> And here's a financial advisor to show you how not to lose a million dollars in a year. That, that, wouldn't, that wouldn't be out of line to, for those three things. No, to come up. but does that happen? Like, do you think each team has, has that in place? The banana happens. Oh, Jesus Christ. How was the banana, banana happened for me about 30 years ago? Happened. You wouldn't have 17 fucking kids. I wouldn't have 17 children I don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, there's got to be a, a, something in place... Between the NFL and their new draft picks, for the NFL to tell them, don't do these things, do these things, yeah. don't do these things, do these things. I think, I, I suppose they try. I suppose they try. You know, so the, it's, the thing I, that, that I did on my uh, YouTube channel tonight in my debut, thanks to you guys, at Fish Sports DFW, is pointed out that Randy Gregory, part of his proposal to the league on Monday is going to be what if my parents move here from Michigan and move in with me? Um, I used to joke about this on 105 Through the Fan, half joke. My, my, my wife's parents, the lovely Marsha, her mom Marcia, is... Uh, Happy Marcia. birthday, Marsha. It's yeah. belated, but... Her mom, they're, they're 90 now. Her mom's a saint, listens to the fan, Rangers. Her dad um, was, a, was a fighter pilot in Korea, and his dad was an allied spy in World War II. Wow. Oh, so it occurred to me, because I'm close to Des Bryant, that when, they moved, when Des Bryant came here and was as lost as he was, they should have had him move in with the Murphys, who lived three blocks away from Valley Ranch in Capel. And they would tell Des for the first time in his life, make your bed, take out the trash, home by 11, all the stuff that he never got. Yeah, all he, the we, stuff that Mike Madonna got on the farm. Right. right. At Bail some hay, make your bed, take out the trash, go play hockey, get good grades. All that stuff that a lot of these kids, American football players, do not get nope. that, that maybe Randy Gregory will get again from his own parents, that should be part of the system. Right. That should be part of the NFL system is um, uh, almost foster parents who will be your, your surrogate uncle and aunt, if you will, who, who will love you and help you and show you how to drive a stick shift. And not they don't all have that. Like, They're nobody not. has that coming out of college. No. Um, the NFL players, college, jeez, <laughs> what? coming out of college. <laughs> you want to say goodbye? Wrap it up. I said college. Says the ham camp. <laughs> Wrap it up, ham. <laughs> wow. I, right. dude, I, I, I promise you this. We could sit here and talk I'm all being night. Ordered. We have we have we have the great Mike is, Fisher. Yeah, it's we have weird. the great Mike Fisher on with us, and I could sit here and talk sports all night long. But we we can't. And. 
We want to thank everybody for joining us. Timmy, uh, let's, uh, let's put a bow on this thing. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I got to take him home and deal with this. <laughs> Are you ready to close things out? Yeah. We're all drunk. All right. <laughs> well, then let's say goodbye to Mike Fisher. Hey, Fish. Glad you were here tonight. Thank you Appreciate so very you much. coming on with us. So well, very yeah, much. Dude, your guys' support here. of what we do at the fan is incredible. There's nothing like it in the country. Um, and then you guys helping me with YouTube along with Kevin on and Dawson and Spittle and the rest so I can be, you know, one of the cool kids like you guys. Well, we do. Um, really, that, the, the marriage between between the fan and its fans is uh, unprecedented. It's amazing, it's cool. right? It's cool. No, it's amazing. We love so it. So we love Fish. We're glad he was here tonight. i you ready Dude, in that, things? That, I could, I could sit, like I said, I could sit here and talk for another two hours. Oh, Jesus but Christ! I, I know that but apparently one of us can't. can't. We're <laughs> <laughs> that that that, and we're we're creeping up on Fish's bedtime. So well, I'm watching. We're two hours in almost. <laughs> almost, right. almost. So hey, close things out for us, bro. All right. Once again, Fish, thank you so much for for being being here with us. Uh, Jeb, uh, Mark, Lauren, y'all, thanks for coming out. Always remember, if you wake up and the demons are fighting you, don't hesitate to call me. Look me up. Find us. Find one of us. We will come talk to you. We love you. We're always here for you. Thank you and good night. Hey, everybody. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Drunk Sports Podcast. Join us next time for a lot more alcohol and more drunk sports talk with Lance and Tim. Until next time, here's to you. We're all drunk. This is the funnest night ever. <laughs> oh, some food.